Hi everybody, this is Sam with Python Basics, and today we need to do a little bit of a throwback. Doing math with input from the user, using the input function. So alright, got this question just, uh, just the other day, and I answered it on Discord, so if you haven't joined the Discord server, do that now. Alright, this is a throwback, but I guess I just cannot believe that I have not done a specific video I've probably talked about or done this lesson um, probably close to a hundred times so alright we're gonna take input from the user um, oh and make sure you're staying tuned uh, until the end to watch any of these videos that you haven't seen and also uh, I'll give you a little bit of update on how things are going for me at the end so alright <clears throat> We're going to use the input function, the built-in input function from Python, and we're just going to take a number. And there's actually a lot to unpack here. And like I said, I really cannot believe that I do not have specific videos uh, talking about this. Enter number. All right. And we're going to leave some space. And then we're just going to uh, print this plus two all right and we are going to have all kinds of problems then I'm going to show you uh, a couple other things let's run this and we're going to sit here we're going to enter a number and boom we have a problem can only concatenate string not int to string okay let's look at help on input what does it do all right, it brings in a string. Okay, wait a second. So I'm trying to concatenate. Let's look at what X is now. Ah, so I'm trying to concatenate because since a string is first, this is the way Python interprets this. It takes the first and goes, okay, I know what this is. And then you're trying, this is a string. So now you're trying to concatenate a string to an int. That doesn't work. So if I did the reverse and I tried to do this, then I would say it can't support a math operation of an int to a string. Whatever is first, Python goes, all right, you want to do that. So this is how we work around. Actually, I want to show you this too. So you can get a false. <clears throat> so this will work, but this will not be what you expect. All right. So this will not fail, but this will not be what you're expecting unless you're expecting a string. So now we enter two. All right. And I get two strings. So what is happening in the background is this. I want two strings to Two, two of them, side by side. So it would be like this. Sam and Sam, sandwiched together. This is legal. This is completely legal in Python. It does not throw an error because you just want two strings. That can be a little odd for uh, beginners. So now, that's one, one problem. Now this is how we can solve it. We can wrap this so let's go back over here and change this to this so I can wrap my X in a 2 and then I get 4 or let's copy we're gonna have this so we can keep it so you can see that one or you can do it at the beginning this is also completely legal. And all right, so now I'm taking my function, then wrapping an int function. I'm converting a string, just like I did here. So I'm taking a string and I'm wrapping the int function around it. I'm converting this to two. So this is completely legal as well on the same line. I'm taking my int, wrapping my input function which comes out as a string I want it converted to an int 
then I want to do a math operation and just print it out. Boom. Now, okay, what happens if I need this to be 2.5? Ooh, okay. So now, now I got a little bit of a problem. But not if I do this. I can convert this to a float. Yeah, I did that, that, that right. I just got my cursor in the way. Do, 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 do. All right, so now I run this. 2.5, now I get 4.5. So now you know how to, you can convert a input function, input from the user to a either to do math operations, either an int or a float. We just take our float and int object, wrap it around, becomes a function, and converts those to uh, that object that will then allows you to do a math operation. So, all right. There we go. Now I said I was going to give you guys an update and kind of share some things that <clears throat> have really cemented for me and things that I've been working on for a long time for me personally. So, all right. I've really had a hard time over the past uh, month with this course that I'm working on and um, to the point where it it I was stuck for probably two solid weeks where I didn't do anything because nothing that I had done for the past two or three weeks um, was good and I hit a problem and I hit a snag. So then it became um, debilitating, incapacitating. So I allowed, and I really, I really wasn't, and the more I looked at it, the really, I really wasn't stuck. I was just scared and fearful. So then what I did is I just laid out what the problem was. What, what did I, so I started laying out what I took a spreadsheet and I created, uh, I laid out what, what was the problem. And then I started looking that it really wasn't as big as a problem as I thought it was. And I broke it down a little bit smaller. So then I um, made the task manageable. And then I just started and it really wasn't as bad as I had worked this up in my head. So what I really just want to pass on to you, it's really kind of like pushing a car to get it rolling. It takes so much energy to just get the car rolling because it's just stuck. It's there. But once it gets going, in my experience, it's never as bad as you think it is. There's a, there was an old saying that uh, somebody in the United States said, there's nothing to fear but fear itself. And that is so very true. For me, I make a bigger deal out of things than they need to be. And then I allow that to become the idea, I allow the idea to become what I'm worried about than the actual object, the project, the thing I'm trying to solve. So just wanted to share that with you and then had uh, some really good breakthroughs and really solved a lot, really super excited about um, being able to announce working with um, my partner and um, they're working on their end and then I'm working on the content so hopefully we'll have uh, and then of course then that's given me more ideas but don't don't allow the thing to scare you into not doing and that's that's what I experienced for this past four weeks is that I made this thing scary but once I made broke it down into manageable small tasks now, of course, I hit hiccups along the way and, um, and had to work through those, but the task and the challenge was not as challenging as I had made it in my own mind. So I just wanted to share that with you guys and um, hope that helps anybody out there working on whatever they're working on. So there we go, guys.
And if this is the type of video you like, make sure you're hitting that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up on this video. And hey, join that Discord server. I don't want you guys sitting out there by yourselves um, thinking that uh, you're all alone. You're not. There's a bunch of people out here uh, wanting to help you uh, solve your problems, help you with uh, your Python, and just uh, be a part of a group. So there we go, guys. Oh, and watch these till the end. Uh, there, there's 800 and... 40 something of them. So uh, there's probably one you haven't seen. So there we go, guys. As always, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. We'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Hey, guys. Thanks for joining us today. I hope you really enjoyed today's video. And if you haven't, check out this video right here or this one right down here. And most important, make sure you're hitting this subscribe button and the notification bell. Thanks again for joining us, and we hope to see you next time. Bye, guys.